Hey, welcome to Pen Talk number 17. Um, if you're new here, my name is Andy, and let's talk about pens and things. Um, sorry, that's like me going into like my like podcaster mode because um, that's how I introduce my um, knitting podcast every week. So it's weird because like I've gotten into the habit of doing those videos, and so now I'm guessing these videos are gonna start to sound like that too. Um, anyway, um, We'll just continue on with that. So let's see, if you are watching this on the blog, then any links to anything that I mentioned will be down below in the post. Um, and if you are watching this on YouTube, um, in the description box below the video, there will be a link to the specific blog post for this episode. Okay, okay. Um, let's see. Uh, so I should mention that what I was just doing is I was checking to make sure I was recording um, with the right microphone because my setup has changed since last week. Um, it was actually a bummer because I got my new gear um, like the night after I recorded the last video. So I was like, darn it. Um, but I have a new webcam and a new microphone because we are currently building a new computer. Um, it actually just, we just booted it up for the first time. So it is working, but it doesn't have an operating system yet. So yeah, I'm still recording this on my laptop, which if you see me looking in this direction, that's me looking at my laptop screen to make sure things are like in focus and stuff. But anyway, so I have a new mic and a new camera and everything, and I would tell you what the camera is, but I don't know what it is. Um, and I don't see the box anywhere. Boo. Okay. Uh, it's a Logitech. Oh, let me see if I can maybe. It, it's a C920, apparently. Um, and the microphone that I'm using is a... Um, blue Yeti. Let me see. I can actually that I can actually see. Ta da! Fancy schmancy microphone. Um, yeah. So very cool stuff. Uh, anyway, so let's uh, talk a little bit about what I am using or what I have been using this past week um, slash what's in use currently, and then we'll talk a little bit about what I've been reading and listening to and stuff like that as it relates to the writing hobby. Um, so yeah, so what I have been using this past week, um, I am actually back in my Hobonichi. Um, I keep meaning to do a review of this cover and I will probably get around to it in April is my guess, but I use the, um, okay, now I have to see if I can adjust the focus. So that's the cool thing about this is like, it will like focus. So the cover is, a uh, the S. SSACK SAC cover from Hobonichi, and it's the pink one. Um, and yeah, I am back into using this as my EDC. I think I had talked last week about the fact that like I go back and forth on whether or not I'm gonna use this. And right now I am using it. Um, and I guess I can talk a little bit about how I've been using it. I'm not sure if this is what I will continue to use, but um, I've been working on figuring out like my system. So, what I've been doing, and let me see, I guess I can show, um, I'll show, yeah, I'll show the beginning of March, because I've, I've been back in here since March 1st. So basically what I've been doing is, um, I've been doing it very like bullet journal style, and I know like bullet journal is all the rage right now. Um, I... I'm not really doing it the way that most people are doing bullet journals. So let me let me just show how I'm doing it. So I have the English version of the Hobonichi, and what I've been doing is I have been using the first page. So the first page of the month is this like coming up page, and it looks like that. And let me see, I can come on focus. There we go. So I've been using this page just to like dump out things that need to get done. So I call it my to do dump, and then. Um, for the daily pages, what I do is um, at the beginning of the day, I have been picking out five things that I need to do. And I write them typically um, either like at the beginning of the day or the night before. So like I write out those five things and those are the top priorities for the day. Um, so like if I get nothing else done, I need to at least get those five things done to feel like I've had a productive day. And these aren't like the only five things I have to do. Um, like things that I, that are kind of like part of like my regular schedule for work, I don't write down on my to-do list. Um, but, but yeah, so, so these are a mix of things like at work and like at home, stuff like that. So like those are my five things to do. And then I typically will do kind of like a little recap, 
you know, of, of other stuff that happened during the day. So that if I'm looking back, I can see like, oh, on Tuesday, I wasn't feeling very well. Or on Wednesday, I, you know, finished this one sock or something like that. Just, just a little brief recap of my day. Bullet point journaling, I guess, um, kind of stuff. So that has been working really well. It's, it's not fancy, but it works. And then I've been using the, um, like the monthly spread to keep track of like my bills and stuff. And then I have been using the, um, like the kind of like year to glance spread almost that kind of thing. Um, sort of as like a, a calendex kind of thing that way, like I never have to like move forward. Um, but I, I'm not sure that I'm going to keep up with that. But anyway, so I've been back in my Hobonichi as my EDC. I was using like the black writing that you saw in there was a Pigma Micron that I was using. Um, now I actually just re-inked up my, um, Pilot Vanishing Point and I have Sailor Saiboku in here. So that's what I've been using just because I really enjoy the clicky pen and it works really nicely with the pen loop on this cover. So that's what I've been using kind of like as my like EDC to-do list kind of thing. Um, and then I've also been using my, or well, not my, Wesley's, um, Midori Traveler's Notebook. This is a standard size Midori. Um, I, I think I had this all set up last week, so it's not really any different. It's got um, a book in here that's just got like Tomo River paper in it. It's not even bound. And then it has, um, a folder as well and that's it um and what i've been using this for is i've been using this for like the more creative things so like i um like i draft um blog posts and stuff in here so like um like i wrote out some of my notes for today and then like this was the draft of the blog post that i posted on wednesday so i wrote that out by hand simply for the the sheer joy of you know writing on nice paper with nice pens so that's kind of what this has been for is it's more for more of like the creative stuff We'll see, we'll see how long like this balance sort of lasts because I'm just like always playing with my system and always trying to figure out a way to make it better and work better. But the thing is like, I really love using the Midori. Like I love like just like the aesthetic and the feel of it, but it's just a little bit bigger than I think I would prefer. So in that way, like the Hobonichi is nice, but at the same time, like I've been carrying this everywhere with me anyway. So we'll see, I wanna make it through at least a month using this. Um, to really get like that system figured out and then who knows where it'll go from there. But yeah, so I've been using those and then I've still been carrying around my NAC Co Lookout. Um, and it's the same pens that are in here as before. So I have my um, Gray Safari and my Vista in here. Um, the Gray Safari is inked with um, Deatramentis, uh, the document fuchsia, which I really like. Um, it's a very fun, um, like permanent pink ink. I really like having like a red pink kind of ink um, in one of my pens. And then this guy, the Vista has um, the KWZ Quizzy, whatever, um, turquoise, which was sent to me by my buddy Paul at gorgeous.ink. And I will link to his blog because it's awesome and you should totally read it. Um, but anyway, oh my gosh. And so this is an Iron Girl ink and I love it. It's great. Um, and then in the middle is my standard Pilot Juice. And then this is not a Micron. I had a Micron in there before. Um, this is actually another pen that I picked up at the art supply store. And let's see if I can get this to focus. This is the Sakura Microperm, which is basically the um, Sakura version of like a fine tip Sharpie. And it's been pretty awesome and I like it a lot. So I didn't realize it was like a Sharpie when I bought it. So of course it bleeds through everything, but it is nice to have like a Sharpie in here because I. I always find that I need to have a Sharpie with me. Um, like I carry one in kind of like my pouch that I showed last week um, that just like has kind of odds and ends and stuff in it. I always carry a Sharpie in there because like I'll get to the post office and be like, oh shoot, I need a Sharpie. Um, and then the other thing I've been using is, I don't think I mentioned this, but I have been using this. It's a, it's a notepad by Fabriano and I don't know that I will be able to get the, oh, okay. So it's a notepad by Fabriano and it's um it's just like it's just perfect bound and i don't know if it'll focus on that maybe it's a dot grid on the inside um and i just tear sheets off as i go um i've used oh maybe about a third of it by now and i really like it like it's a5 so it's nice and small and portable 
And it's just nice to have somewhere that I can like take notes and then tear them out and like file them in the appropriate spot or put them with the appropriate stuff for later. Um, and it wasn't terribly expensive. Like I think this is like $5 at my local art supply store for 90 pages of like fountain pen friendly paper. So it's nice for just like junk kind of note paper. Um, and yeah, I've been really enjoying that and I will review it at some point eventually. And speaking of reviewing things, um, last week on the blog, I posted a, or I wrote a post about what happened when I um, put some writing in a notebook and then soaked it because I was curious about if that would be any different. Like if the, um, if being in a closed, you know, strapped notebook would be any different um, in terms of water resistance of inks than if they were just on a sheet of paper. So I will, of course, link to that in the notes and you should definitely check it out. I won't spoil it for you guys. This is what it looked like. Yeah, not kind of worse for wear, but then again, not as bad as I thought it would be. So yeah, that's what was on the blog last week. And then coming up this week on Wednesday, I have an ink review that I will be posting. That is, um, I don't wanna, well, I guess I'll kind of spoil it. Let me, Make sure I can focus. Okay, so this, this is the ink. Oh, come on, focus, focus, focus. There we go. So this ink is the Califolio Olanga ink, which is kind of a bluish tealish color. Um, so yeah, I will have that review up by Wednesday. Um, I actually already have it scanned and everything, so I have no excuse to like not get get it written up ahead of time. Anyway, so that's what will be up on the blog this week. And now let's talk a little bit about what I have been um, like listening to this past week in terms of like podcasts and like YouTube videos I've watched and blog posts I've read. Kind of, I guess this is like my version of like a uh, like a link post um, because of course I will link to all like the original stuff um, in the notes. But um, you know, it, it will definitely be smaller in volume of content, but I want to actually be able to like give feedback about things and you know, stuff like that. So at this point though, um, if you are like watching this, um, there will be nothing interesting visually. It's just gonna be my face talking to the camera. Um, so if you want to go ahead and bring up another screen and like work on something else or play Angry Birds, I don't know if that's still a popular thing or not. Or, you know, if you are listening to this and doing other things, you don't necessarily have to keep like watching the screen. So I just wanted to give you guys a heads up on that. Anyway. Um, so I'm gonna, now my computer is sitting on my lap so that I can actually look at some of these um, things that I have on the screen. So the first thing I wanna talk about is a post on The Finer Point, um, which is thefinerpoint.net. And like I said, I'll link everything. Um, and I really enjoy this blog. And of course I cannot for the life of me think of the name of the person who writes it. Um, Jenny, right? No, Jen, Jenny. I think it's Jenny. Yes, Jenny? I'm gonna go with Jenny. Anyway, um, I really like this blog. Um, it's just really good like quality content and really good posts and I really enjoy them. Um, assuming that it is Jenny, then I got that right. Um, she wrote a post on February 28th that was how, it's called How I Use My Notebooks. Um, and I love these, like I watch, you know, planner flip throughs and stuff on YouTube all the time because I love seeing how other people's like productivity systems work and all of that. And I, this one was especially interesting because she uses a fair amount of stuff. Like she uses, um, you know, multiple Midori Traveler's notebooks. She uses a Hobonichi. She uses um, like other like bigger size bound notebooks and she uses like small notebooks like field notes and stuff. So it's just really interesting to read about like kind of how she's using everything and like her use case. Um, and, and that's kind of why like I wanna share, you know, like how I'm using stuff is because I know that I'm not the only one who loves this kind of stuff. So I don't know if you guys heard that. If you did, I think Wesley was just taking the film off of part of the uh, computer. Anyway, I heard that and I was like, what was that? Yeah, there it is again. Um, anyway, so I love those kind of posts. So that was really fun to read um, and really fun to think about. Uh, let's see, what else? So then the other one was, I also read a good review. Um, a, 
one blog that I read pretty much every week is the Weekly Pencil, which is um, Deirdre, but she goes by D. Um, she's pretty big in like the Erasable Podcast group. Um, and she basically uses a different pencil every week and then reviews it at the end of the week. And I just really love reading her reviews and she's very sassy and I like that. And so she wrote about the Viarco Eco HB pencil, which I actually have and I don't think I ever used. Like I bought it when I bought a bunch of pencils to like do pencil month, like way back forever ago. And then I don't think I ever used it. Like it's very pretty, um, but I never really used it. And I'm kind of glad now because she just did not have a good experience with it. So that's kind of a bummer. But now I might have to dig mine out and see, see if I have the same experience because like with pencils, you know, like they can vary so much just based on kind of like how they're handled and how they're shipped and stuff that like you can have a really horrible experience with a pencil that is completely not representative of a given like pencil line. Um, like I remember on one of the Erasable Podcast episodes, I forget who it was, but one of the hosts was saying that like his first experience with a golden bear was like that, where like he just got a, a dud and just had this horrible impression of it. Um, which of course wasn't fair because, you know, overall they're okay pencils. So it was interesting. Um, so yeah, so that was a good read. And then, um, something else that I watched, which again, kind of goes back to like how people use their notebooks and stuff is this is a YouTube channel that I watch most of her videos and it's Carrie Harling. And if you're not like into the planner community, then you may have never heard of her, but she's kind of big in like the, like traveler's notebook planner kind of community. But I like her, like I identify with her better because she doesn't tend to like plan pretty. Um, like she's very big on functionality because she has like, I don't know, a gazillion children, more children than I can ever imagine, like dealing with, even if they weren't mine. Um, like she has like a whole football team of children and all boys, I think too. Um, so she's very much like about function. And so they're doing this kind of series right now about like, um, like, like, why do you plan and how do you plan and stuff? And while I don't love like, you know, the using like planning as this weird verb that doesn't actually mean like planning things, she's always very interesting to watch. And so I watched her um, video about planning inspiration and kind of like, why do you do what you do and all of that. Um, and she's just always really interesting to listen to. And like, she is kind of, so I mentioned that, you know, I'm trying to figure out like my system, like that's one of those things where like bouncing between the Hobonichi and the Midori, um, I'm trying to figure out a system. And that's one of those things that she's big on is like, you know, you have your system and then it doesn't matter how you do it. Like you can do it in a blank notebook. You can do it in a field notes. You can do it in a Hobonichi. You can do it in a Midori. You can do it in a file effects. Doesn't matter as long as you have a system that works for you. The rest is just a medium. The rest is just like whatever makes you happy to, to do it in. So um, I really like that. And that's kind of why like I'm trying to like really get like a system in place and then I will figure out the format of like how I be the most productive me. Um, so yeah, that's that. And then let's talk about podcasts that I've been listening to. I don't listen to a lot of podcasts um, because I just have a hard time finding ones that I really like resonate with. But I do really enjoy the Erasable podcast and I listen to the Pen Addict podcast most weeks. There was a chunk of them that I missed and I don't know if I'm going to go back or if I'm just going to declare bankruptcy. Um, and then, and I also listen to the podcast Analog, which is not writing related, but it's Mike Hurley and Casey Liss. And because it's Mike Hurley and I always associate him with the Pen Addict, I'm like, yeah, that totally fits in with this stuff, right? Anyway, so this week's episode of the Erasable Podcast, I thought was really good because they were talking about like, what was your most disappointing kind of like writing experience? And they were talking about like disappointing papers and pencils and stuff like that. And, and so, you know, it was just very funny because, you know, it, it, you know, it was really like, you know, not so much like things that you knew were going to be disappointing, but like surprisingly disappointing things. And so I thought, you know, I would answer that question too. So like in general, my most disappointing thing when it comes to like this like writing hobby is like eco products that are not actually eco. Um, <laughs> and they were giving they were giving Johnny so much grief about like the Wopex. But like that's one of those things that I like, yes, that's eco, I guess, in that it takes something that would otherwise just be like trash or burned or something and makes it usable. 
but like it's full of plastic you know like like the binders that hold that together are plastic and i feel the same way about like stone paper you know where it's like well sure you know you're not cutting down trees but that paper's basically made of plastic you know and things like that so things that like are marketed as being very ecologically friendly but then it's made of plastic and i'm like well is that biodegradable plastic because otherwise that thing is going to be sitting there forever you know in a landfill like you know it, it will never return to the earth and versus like trees trees are a renewable resource and like the wood will decompose eventually like if you leave a pencil out but plastic not so much so that's like my biggest disappointment is like things that are eco but i'm like that's not eco um and then and then they also talked about like what is like the, you know the one thing you know about that is like an underappreciated awesome thing and i i had to chime in and of course i don't have any of them here because i only have one left because i sent a bunch of them off to other people but um at the beginning of like school time this year they had these cute little pencil e shaped erasers at target and they were made by dixon and they're like shaped like little tiny stubby dixon ticonderogas and like they're really cute so you're like and they were like three bucks for three erasers so you're like, oh, they can't possibly work. But they do, they work so well and they're so cute. And I'm hoping that I see them again, maybe like this fall, because I want all of them because they work really well and they're adorable. And they're like fun to like give to people who like I know have kids um, because I know their kids will like them because they're so cute and they use erasers. So yeah, that was like my underappreciated, like awesome thing. Um, and then, yeah, so then I said, I also listened to the Pen Attic podcast and I listened to the most recent one, oh my gosh, on Saturday, maybe? I forget what day I was listening to it. Um, I remember I was listening to it while I was at work and I was like setting up or taking down a lab, which is always tough because like, um, what I tend to do is like, uh, well, let me explain how I do this. So my office is also like kind of like the storage room for all of like the lab equipment and then like two of the lab rooms are connected to my office so like for that i just take a cart basically i wheel it into the room load everything up on the cart bring it all back put it back where it belongs um and then the other rooms like have their own storage areas for their own equipment so what i tend to do is i will like turn a podcast on on my phone and i will like turn it up all the way and put it somewhere kind of in a location where I can hear it no matter where I am, but I always wind up missing things. Um, and if I remember right, like if it was Saturday that I was doing this, I also wasn't feeling great that day. But anyway, so I was listening to it and like, there's a lot that I won't comment on because like it was, you know, a lot of, you know, topic and stuff. But like something I did want to comment on because I've been hearing about this a lot is I've been hearing about, um, you know, some people went to the LA Pen Show and just did not like have a good experience there because um, some of the people who go to pen shows are not, are not like modern pen users, I guess is the way I will put it. Like they didn't start using pens kind of in this age of like pen usage. They started using them a long time ago. And so they tend to be a little bit different in how their attitude is about fountain pens and stuff. And sometimes like when someone of like, I wanna say, I'm gonna say this generation of like pen users, and I don't mean an age thing, but like, I mean people who have come to like fountain pen use recently um, versus like last generation in that people who got into it kind of before it was cool. Um, anyway, so like sometimes when you have those two worlds kind of collide at a pen show, it doesn't always go the best. And that's just because, you know, there's some fundamental differences between like how this generation sees it and how that generation sees it. And there's nothing wrong with that. Like people will speculate and talk about like why those differences are. And that's not what I'm here to say, but I wanted to like shed some, shine some of my experience on this. And of course I've only been to one pen show and that was the DC pen show last year. Um, but, you know, my experience there was that you basically had two groups of people. You had retailers who are salespeople, and then you had private collectors who were maybe there to sell off some of their collection or something like that. And, and yeah, I experienced what I was hearing about in that, like, some of those private collectors were not super friendly and warm and welcoming um, to, like, someone like me. And so part of it is because... I know that like sometimes older men don't tend to be very welcoming towards younger women, 
that's fine. I mean, you know, I'm willing to write that off. It's not okay, of course, but sometimes that just is what it is. And sometimes it's not a form to deal with that. Anyway, um, so like I experienced what people have been talking about, where like sometimes I would go up to tables of these collectors and they didn't want to give me the time of day. You know, they didn't say hello. And I mean, the fact is it was probably obvious that I wasn't going to buy anything from them. So it's was probably obvious that they would have been wasting their time trying to sell me something. But like at the same time, like, you know, I would have enjoyed at least, you know, for them to say, hello, is there anything you're looking for? And you know, if you need anything, let me know. So, I mean, I get it. Like I've, I've experienced that, but at the same time, like you have to realize like salespeople, you know, are there to sell things. So like people who like, like, you know, the people from Van Ness Penn, Van Ness Penn, um, or like people from like, Chatterley Luxuries who are there, or like the Andersons, um, like they are there to sell stuff. Like they are there as business people representing their business selling things. Um, you know, they have a very vested interest in you feeling like you've had a warm, fuzzy customer experience and, you know, wanting to come back to them as a retailer. Not that there's anything wrong with that. That's how business works. Um, versus like these guys who come and set up their tables and they're just there to see if anyone wants to buy part of their collection. They're not salespeople. Like they are not by training and by nature salespeople. And it's a very high energy environment, lots of new people. And some of these guys may be introverts. They may, you know, not like people, especially depending on how old they are. They may be hard of hearing, who knows? Um, but like, I feel like you can't expect them to be the same as like a business person who's there at like selling things. Like it's just very different. Um, and, and like, I don't expect that. So like, while it may be a little bit, you know, annoying to like not get a hello and a warm welcome, I get it. You know, like it doesn't offend me deeply because it's like, well, these guys aren't salespeople. So I'm not expecting them to, to like make me feel warm and fuzzy. You know, I'm not going to buy anything from them and they can probably tell that. So, okay, I won't touch their stuff and that's fine. Um, so I don't know, like, I, I definitely understand like why people would get like kind of offended by it, but at the same time, like, I think it's just important to remember who it is that you're talking to. And that like, even though someone has a table there and they're selling things, that doesn't mean that they're a salesperson. And that doesn't mean that they're going to treat you like a salesperson would. Um, and that's okay. Like it, it just, it is what it is and that's fine. You know, so I just wanted to comment on that a little bit. Um, and then, so then, okay, so then I guess kind of the last thing I'll talk about, and this isn't really pen related because like I said, um, I listened to the analog podcast, but like I somehow lumped that in with like this kind of stuff just because of my curly. But anyway, um, so I was listening to, I think it was the latest one, episode 74. I think that was the latest one. Um, and they were talking about Casey's new job and all of that. And like Casey was kind of describing something a little bit similar. And I'm sure that it's not actually similar at all. But anyway, to me, it resonated similar to kind of my job transition from like my old job in Wisconsin to my current job here, where um, like he was saying like his old job was very like driven by like billing time to a project and that his new job is not really so much like it's more of a normal kind of work week. And I have a similar situation, like my old job, we had to build time to a project. So like, you know, it wasn't just that you worked 40 hours a week, it was that you had to have 40 billable hours to, to projects, you know, like to, to those things. Um, and, and versus like my job now, like, and I mean, I was salaried at that job, like, don't get me wrong, I was salaried at my old job, but it was like, you had to work 40 billable hours. Um, versus like my job here, like it's still of course expected that I'm working 40 hours a week, but like, it's really like much more in the spirit of like, you're salaried, like you're an adult, you know, get your work done, come in at a reasonable time, leave at a reasonable time and do, do your work, you know, which is hard to adjust to. Like, it's really hard to adjust to that when you've gotten into this mindset of like, you know, having to account for like all of your time in 15 minute increments, which was what I had to do versus like just being like well did you get done what you had to get done yeah okay and so you know wesley has heard me complain about that a lot where like i just am like it's hard to adjust um so not that i ever expect casey would be listening to this but if you are i know how that feels um and, and i wrote down something and i don't remember if this is something that like they talked about directly or if this was just a connection that i made but i 
I want to say that like he was talking about like what's next, you know, and like not knowing how long he was going to stay at this job and all of that. And so that made me think of this. So like, again, I have no idea how much this actually relates to that episode. But, um, you know, of course, people here, you know, with my new job here have been asking kind of like, you know, how long are you going to stay here? You know, kind of what's next and all of that, because a lot of them know that I'm dating Wesley and he's a grad student, so he's not going to stay here forever. And um, and something that I've come to realize about myself is that there's a, there's two kinds of people in the world. There are people who love their job and like, or maybe don't love their job, but like want a job that they love. Like they, they want to love their job. They really need that. And then there are people who love their paycheck. And, and there's nothing wrong with being either of those two people. But I have realized that I'm one of those people where like, I don't have to love my job. I just have to be okay with the paycheck that I get from it. Um, because like for me, I don't wake up, like I love this job, like this job here is great and it's it really is what I want to be doing, but I still don't wake up in the morning jazzed about going to work. Like I still wake up and I'm like, oh, I have to go to work today. You know, like it still is that same feeling where I'm not like, yeah, work, <laughs> you know? And, and that's okay because, you know, while I like the job and, and it pays well and all of that, if I could pick to be doing anything in the world, it would not be doing this. Like I wouldn't be working, you know? Um, so like, I don't think there's anything wrong with needing to love your job and being willing to maybe sacrifice a little bit of your paycheck for that. But like for me, I think I don't love my job because what I love will never be my job, if that makes sense. Like, you know, what do I love? I love, um, I love knitting. I love, you know, like writing for my blog. I love recording videos and stuff. Like I really enjoyed this, but like I would never be a professional like pattern designer for knitting. I would never be a professional blogger. I would never be a professional YouTuber um, because those things are just a little bit too tenuous for me and I just don't have the nerves for that. So like the fact is like what I love will never be my job. So I'm okay with not necessarily loving the job that I do have as long as it pays me enough that I can do the things that I do love when I'm not working. Um, again, not to say that I don't love my job now. I do like my job now, I'm just, just fine. Um, but I think that's important and I don't think there's anything wrong with not loving your job or not doing, you know, like not following your passion to be your career because just not everyone needs to have that. Some people do and that's good and they should definitely follow their dreams, but like, some people don't need that. They need a job that pays the bills and, you know, leaves them with a little bit of money afterwards. And that's fine too, you know? And, and I guess I'm just kind of one of those second groups of people who loves the paycheck and that's cool too. So yeah, I think that's all I have for this week. Um, I'm hoping that once we have our computer all set up and we have a desk built and everything that hopefully I will be able to do more, um, like videos that aren't like this kind of video, like more like video reviews and stuff. Um, right now, everything is kind of in disarray just because we have computer parts and computer part boxes everywhere and like we don't have a desk. And so hopefully within the next couple weeks, um, there will be more video reviews and stuff coming up. Just be patient, hang on with me. Um, but yeah, that's gonna be it for today. And thanks for watching. And I hope to see you guys again next week for episode 18. Yeah, for today, see you later.